What's up guys, my name is Lex, welcome back to the vlog. It's Saturday night on the Las Vegas Strip and tonight we're playing at the Bellagio. We head over to the poker room which is packed full of people ready to gamble. Instead of playing my regular 510 game tonight, we are bumping up the stakes, playing 10, 20, no limit. The biggest game running right now in the city. I buy in for $5,000, I'm willing to risk up to three buy-ins for this game. This means if I run bad and things go wrong, I could lose up to $15,000. I take my seat, the pressure is on, the stakes are high. I, let's go. Playing five-handed at the must move game. We look down at Ace King. I raise it up to $60. Only the big blind calls, so we're heads up to our first flop at 10, 20, no limit, which is King High flopping top pair, top kicker. He checks. I bet $60 and he folds. A little bit of stress and pressure is relieved after winning the first hand, but our adrenaline starts pumping again when we look down at pocket aces. The cutoff raises to $60. I bump it up here with the best hand to 220 bucks. Folds back over to the initial raiser who thinks for a little bit of time, looks over at my stack and grabs some more black chips and puts in a four bet re-raises me to $540. Taking a shot at a big game and we get four bet holding aces. It does not get much better than that. My opponent started the hand with $2,000, which is only 100 big blinds. I don't think he's ever four betting to the sizing and folding any hands, so I tank for a little bit of time, put on a Hollywood, and decide to rip it all in. All in. Watch it. Twice as hard. I have aces. Yeah. Good thing I bought him for 2K. Queens versus aces, a pretty big cooler here. We run out the board twice and we hold up to win over a $4,000 pot. Within the first orbit, we're already up over $2,000. Next hand, the small blind makes it $70. I have pocket tens in the big blind and decide to call. We see a flop heads up of ace seven deuce two diamonds. He continues for an $80 bet here. I don't think I can fold just yet. I'm ahead of all of his Broadway cards and all of his pocket pairs below pocket ten. So I make the call. The turn is the four of clubs bringing two flush draws and my opponent continues to bet now for a pretty big sizing $220 bet. I think this is a close spot between folding and calling and given the fact that it is small blind versus big blind in a game where players are definitely more capable of bluffing, I feel like I'm going to call one more time and see what happens on the river. Maybe if a diamond or a club comes and my opponent checks, I could potentially turn my hand into a bluff to get him off an ace. The river card is a three now bringing a one liner straight to any five. If the small blind continues to bet on this run out, I am most likely going to be folding here, but I expect him to check a lot of the time, which he ends up doing. Now I have a decision, should I turn my pocket tens into a bluff or just take him to showdown? And given the fact that I beat all of his bluffs, I decide to check and it's a good thing I did because he shows ace five for a straight and he takes this one down. Two hands later, we are on the button and look down at another premium hand. Ace King, I raised to $60. Small blind folds and the big blind decides to put in a rather large three bet to $300. The standard size at a position in this game was around 220 to 240. So given this sizing, I decided to just make the flat call. I'm playing a little passive while I get used to these stakes. In position, I actually think a call here is fine sometimes. Heads up to a queen eight nine flop. We completely miss. He bets $200 and I fold. I have noticed when I'm taking a shot at a bigger game that I'm not used to, I tend to play more passive preflop, which I'm trying to change. This game, however, is playing massive. So much money on the table, some huge pots going on. We gotta buckle up and get ready. Cutoff races to $60. I decide to three bet bluff with queen jack offsuit on the button to $200. He ends up folding and I decide to show my hand hoping that it will help my table image a little bit given the fact that I've been playing fairly tight so far on the session. Last hand we put in a light three bet but this time we got the goods. Pocket aces in the small blind. Cutoff makes it $60. I glance over at a stack to see how much he has. The cutoff has four stacks of $20 chips. I'm used to playing 510 where we play with $10 chips so when I see four stacks, I think it's only $800. However, in this game, we play with $20 chips, so it's actually $1,600. So I make a misclick here and only three bet to $180 out of position because I thought my opponent had less than $1,000. And that's not the only weird thing that happens in this hand. When the flop comes out, look over at the cutoff. I haven't acted yet and he checks out of turn, which I find pretty weird. We're playing a high stakes game and I would assume that everyone here knows how to act in turn. So I actually think this is potentially an angle. 
This is an angle where someone checks at a turn to try to make it look like they don't have that strong of a hand when in reality they have a monster. So I'm going to proceed with caution here. I decide to bet $140. We go heads up to the turn which is a queen and I decide to check. It is possible that he just got mixed up and thought that he was acting first but I don't know. I've seen this before and almost every time they've had a monster. I check and he instantly checks back. The river's the eight of clubs so now I'm just going to go for thin value against any weak king. Or possibly a queen. I bet $320 and he snap calls me, which I feel like is a good sign until he shows King 7 for a full house. Looks like my read is right and he was trying to angle me on the flop, but luckily we lost a minimum because he just called the river, which I don't understand. I'll take it, moving on to the next hand. The button makes it $60 when it folds to him and I look down, got another premium, ace, king, and the small blind. I look over at his stack to see how much he has and he has three $5,000 chips, so yeah, he covers me. So I'm going to put in a standard three bet here to $240, add a position, he makes the call. King 7 3, two spades. We flop top pair, top kicker. I continue for $180, and the button makes the call. The turn is the 4 of spades, not the best card, bringing in the flush. 5 6 for a straight, and also some two pairs. I do have the king of spades in my hand, so I think this is a hand I can be betting here on the turn. If I get raised, I can still call. So I continue for $500. And this time, the button lets it go. Moving to the next hand with 6-7 suited on the button. The hijack makes it $60. The same player who potentially angled us when he flopped a full house. He only has about $1,100 in his stack. So I feel like I could fold here sometimes. But this time, I decide to make the call. We flop a flush draw and a backdoor straight draw. So when he continues for $80, I make a call. If the fourth card gives me a flush, maybe I should check at a turn. Just kidding. I wouldn't do that, but we do pick up some extra outs here. Now to a straight draw and a flush draw. My opponent continues to bet for $200. This would be a card that I could potentially turn my hand into a semi-bluff and raise. However, with only $800 left in his stack, I don't think he's ever folding any hand that he's betting here. When semi-bluffing with a draw, you want your opponent to have enough money so that you can put a lot of pressure on their one pair hands. With only $800 behind, I can't really put too much pressure on him, so I decided to just play my hand straight up here. I'm going to make the call. If I hit on the river, I'll probably get paid off. If I miss, I'll just fold. The last card is the seven of hearts. We brick all of our outs. The hijack player goes all in. I can't call $800 with just a single pair seven, so I let my hand go. We've been winning and losing some hands after two hours, our stack's at $5,300. There's an under the gun raise to 60, a call, and the button now puts in a three bet to $280. We're in the small blind again with pocket aces for the third time of this session. Facing an under the gun raise, a call, a three bet on the button with pocket aces in the small blind. This is what dreams are made of. We have a slam dunk four bet here. I decide to go 3.5x, $1,020 with my four bet sizing. I decide to go a little bit bigger because one, there's a lot of dead money in the pot. I'm out of position and the button seems like a pretty sticky player. He has $20,000 in his stack. So exploitatively, I go a little bigger when I'm facing one of his raises. Obviously, best case scenario is that the button just puts us all in and we play over a $10,000 pot with pocket aces. However, it seems that he was getting out of line. He ends up making the fold, but we do end up taking down over $400 pre-flop without even seeing a flop. A very tough player under the gun with $20,000 in his stack raises to 60. There's a call and I look down at another premium in the small blind ace king of hearts. We're picking up monsters back to back to back. I decide to three bet 5x now at a position to $300. Unfortunately, no action for us. Both of my opponents fold. I'm under the gun, raised to $60 with pocket sevens. End up getting two callers, three ways to a jack, nine, seven flop, making a set. We are on fire this session. Super heater here, making a ton of big hands. I see about $140. Only the small blind makes the call. Turn, deuce of hearts, total brick. Brings in two flush draws now. I'm hoping my opponent has a straight draw and flush draw or pair and flush draw and will call a big bet. So I size up here to $400 with my set of sevens but this time he decides to fold. As you move up in stakes, the players usually get better, which means it's a little harder to get paid off when you do make a hand. It's unlike a 1-2 or a 2-5 game where people are donking off 2-3-4 or 5 buy-ins. This game is pretty tough and it is hard to get paid off, but 
the night is still young. We still have a lot of time left to make some more money. Speaking of making money, how about Pocket Kings? I am not joking with you guys. We're picking up so many big monsters in this session back to back to back. Under the Gun makes it $60, folds all the way over to me. Putting in a 3-bet here is going to look super strong. However, we got the second best hand you can ever get pre-flop, so I'm not just going to flat call. I re-raise here to $240. Under the Gun started the hand with roughly $4,000 in a stack and ends up making the call, so we're heads up in a 3-bet pot with Pocket Kings, which is Queen 8, 3, 2 clubs. We make an over pair with a backdoor flush draw. A great board for us. We're only losing to two hands, queens and eights. There's no two pairs on this board that my opponent would play, so I don't down bet here. I bet $260, really trying to get value from all of his under pairs to the queen, his queen x hands, his flush draws, and gut shot straight draws. He decides to tag along with a call, and we see the four of spades on the turn. Another great card for us. When my opponent raises under the gun, then just calls my re-raise, and then calls on the flop, I think he's going to have a lot of pocket nines, tens, and jacks. So I could bet small on this turn card, like $200 or $300. However, in this game, people really pay attention to how you play. I want to play balanced, which means if I'm going to be bluffing here, I'm going to be betting big. So if I have value, I have to bet big as well. So I settle on a bet of $700. I'm hoping this bet size looks a little bluffy and maybe he will hero call me down. If he has ace queen, it's going to be a cooler for him and there's no way he can fold. But he decides to give his cards back to the dealer and we get some more chips pushed in our direction. You can't really ask for a better start to a session when you're taking a shot at a big game, playing with more money than I usually play for. We're picking up big premium hands and holding up most of the time. Our stack has now grown to over $6,800. We got moved over to the main game now. On the button with Ace-8 of hearts, Hijack makes it 60. I re-raised to $200, trying to go heads up in position. However, the small blind and the big blind have different plans. They make the call as well as the Hijack. Four ways to an $800 pot, which comes 9 seven three two spades we completely miss the small blind leads out and we just make the fold we are in the under the gun position next with ace queen it seems like a hand i want to be playing so i bump it up to 60 dollars. i get two calls from the only two players at the table i feel like i have an edge on which is good for me when the flop comes down king jack deuce two spades we flop an over card a gut shot and a backdoor flush draw I see bet $100 here, under the gun plus 2 makes the call, and the cutoff makes the fold. The dealer puts out the miracle, beautiful 10 of clubs on the turn, giving us the nuts, the best hand possible. Wow, what a session this has been. We just bink the nuts right on the turn. A perfect situation when we bink the nuts against a player who I feel like I have an edge on in a bigger game that we usually play on a board that he should have a ton of strong hands. He can have all the two pairs, maybe some sets or a lower straight. So I bet big here $380, expecting him to call with basically 100% of his range, which he does decide to do. In my head, I'm praying to the dealer as she collects the chips, put out a brick, a red three, one time ace of clubs on the river we still have the nuts but it's not the best card we can now be chopping with a lot of his hands and it's going to be harder to get some value now in my head i was thinking if the river's a brick i'm going to bet over a thousand dollars but on this particular river one liner to any queen i'm going to have to bet smaller now to get hero call by his two pair hands so i settle on a bet of four hundred dollars he doesn't think for too long and puts in the call i show my hand and it is good we take down another pot running hot making the nuts more chips in our direction next hand the cutoff a very strong professional player makes it 60 dollars i have ace jack of diamonds on the button and decide to call my reasons for calling here is that i'm last to act and the big blind is the same player from last hand who i feel like i have an edge on if i three bet he may fold i want to be playing pots with him he does end up making the call. We go three ways to the flop. On this super dry board, when it checks to me, I check back for deception. The turn is the nine of diamonds, now giving me top pair, jack kicker, and the nut flush draw. We have this board completely crushed. The big blind leads out for $100. I don't see any point in raising here. We have the board crushed. He's probably drawing dead or maybe too very little out, so I want to allow him to continue to bluff if he's bluffing or value bet a worse hand on the river. Eight of clubs, bringing in some straights and some two pairs my opponent could have. If he bets here, I'm not going to like it, but I'll just have to put in the call. However, he decides to check, which I don't think he's ever doing with two pair straights, sets, ace king or ace queen. 
So I think Ace Jack's 100% in the lead right now. I've underrepped my hand so far. My opponent's capped to basically a top pair, medium kicker hand. So I bet big here, $440. My opponent just called me last hand when there's a one liner out there to the straight for $400. So I feel like he's gonna put in the call here with top pair. He goes into the tank, thinks for a while, and eventually puts in the call. I show Ace Jack for top pair and he shows Ace 10. So we got him pipped by one. We end up taking down this pot. After playing for about four hours, we call it a night, book the win, rack up our chips, head to the cage, and cash out. All right, guys, that is it for this video. Playing 10, 20, no limit at the Bellagio, the biggest game running right now in the city, buying in for $5,000. And I gotta say, it feels good to run good, especially when you're taking a big shot. If I would've ran bad in this session, I could've lost five six seven ten thousand dollars but we ended up picking up aces three times lost a small pot where the guy flopped a full house and basically i lost a minimum in that hand uh stacked pocket queens made a straight value bet got paid off every single time so basically the perfect session wasn't in any tough spots i will take it ended up profiting a little over three thousand dollars after four hours and honestly i feel good i feel like i could keep playing i feel energetic and i feel like my mind is sharp it's around 1 a.m right now but at the main game table an action player would leave and then a pro would sit down and another action player would leave and another pro would sit down so by the last 30 minutes or so of my session it was basically me and like six other 10 20 pros so i felt like four hours was enough I want to book the win i don't need to play in a crazy pro infested game so i called it quits after four hours booked the win three thousand dollars and uh, i had a lot of fun playing the bigger stakes it definitely gets the adrenaline pumping you got more money to play for i was getting super uh confident at the 510 level here so it's good to push the boundaries a little bit but uh gotta say it feels good to run good um hope you guys enjoyed this video i enjoyed making it and if you did please like please comment down below helps push the video helps youtube push it to other people that may not see this video and if you're not already subscribe weekly poker videos just like this you guys can watch every single week but that is it for this one hope you guys enjoyed this until next time i'll see you